Okay, so I thought I'd take a look at overclocking without using any cooling. Uh, I haven't tried this for ages. Uh, I used to use my Pi without any cooling when I first had it. This is my first Raspberry Pi video back in 30th of June 2019. As you can see, there is nothing on there, no heat sinks or anything. Uh, and so I've gone back to that. Uh, it's sitting in a DeSalvo case. Uh, the DeSalvo case does actually add cooling, but only when the lid's on. And you can see here that it's got these heat sinks which sit on the main components and that cools it down. I've got a separate video on that case. It is a great case and I love it. Uh, it looks great on the bottom as well. Make a block by DeSalvo Systems, but it is a solid block of aluminium. Uh, but it's not going to add any cooling to this because it's just screwed into this board. Uh, and uh, as you can see, there's nothing that's going to allow cooling, apart from the fact that it's not enclosed. So if it was in a case, obviously it would heat up quicker. Uh, so I quickly switched to the fan shim by Pi Moroni, and I do love the fan shim by Pi Moroni. Uh, and this bit of SD card is just to spread these pins because I do find that um, it sometimes doesn't work. It just sits over these pins and does a great job. I've got a video on that as well. The main Pi I use, well, apart from the Pi 400, is this 52 Pi Ice Tower Cooler. And the thing I like about it is it keeps it very cool. I generally overclock to about 2147 on the Pi 4, and with passive cooling, it doesn't have any troubles at all. Um, but uh, so I've been running this for a while. I'm overclocked at 2 gigahertz uh, with an over voltage of 6, and I'll show you the config.txt in a minute. As you can see, I'm getting these lines, um, but that's only because I've been messing about with the temperature limits. So this temperature gauge at the top here is a warning. This normally cuts in at 80 and 85 degrees, but I've got it to cut in at 65. That's why it's doing these lines. And it's actually throttling itself a bit in by way of just using a little less power. Let's go over to screen capture and show you a bit more. So if I have a look at this article, overclocking options in config.txt, there's various different things in here. Uh, and I've been playing around with uh, well, one of them was the temp limit, uh, and so I've limited mine to 65, only just playing around, just out of interest. But by default, it's limited to 80 and 85, uh, and it will throttle itself if it gets to those levels. So in theory, it should be pretty safe. Uh, 80, 85 is not, is not a dangerous uh, temperature to use your Pi at. And I did read one comment on uh, one of Jeff Geerling's videos. Uh, someone had commented that you could go up to 125 quite safely and the Pi would still operate. Obviously, I haven't confirmed that. I haven't seen it written, but uh, I, it just got me interested. And obviously, the fact that they throttle it at 80 and 85 uh, means that they're happy for it to run at those temperatures. But it also means that, in theory, my Pi shouldn't get into any trouble. Uh, so it's just going to slow itself down if it gets to those temperatures. But overclock at your own risk. So if I have a look at this document, frequency management and thermal control. All Raspberry Pi models perform a degree of thermal management to avoid overheating under heavy load. The SOCs have an internal temperature sensor which the software on the GPU poles to ensure that the temperatures do not exceed a predefined limit. This is 85 degrees on all models. This was interesting though, this bit here, and this is where this 65 degrees comes in. Uh, because I've lowered the temperature, it was going above 65, but it wasn't throttling the CPU. The, the, the CPU was still running at two gigahertz, uh, which I've overclocked it to. And I just thought it was interesting. Uh, and when I read this bit here, various clocks, e.g. ARM core, V3D, so on, inside the SOC are monitored by the firmware. And whenever they're not running at full speed, the voltage supplied to a particular part of the chip driven by the clock is reduced relative to the reduction from full speed. In effect, only enough voltage is supplied to keep the block running correctly at a specific speed. So effectively, it's if it doesn't need more power, it's lowering the power it's used. There's, there's more details. I'll put this in the description. You can read through it. So at the moment, I'm running it at 60 degrees. If I do something quite intensive, so if I do handbrake, for instance, and I've got a GoPro uh, 1080 file, I think that is on my desktop, so here we go, this one here. So if I click on this and do, let's go general, and let's go very fast, 108030. And let's just convert that video file to another file and watch that temperature spring up. So 62, 63, 65, already up to 65. But crucially, watch the CPU, which is uh, two gigahertz. It doesn't go below that and it also the temperature doesn't stray far above 65. 
but I fully thought that it would get hotter sooner and that it would start toggling back the CPU, but it doesn't seem to be. As far as I can work out, this 65 degrees limit is lowering the amount of power going to various different components that aren't being used at the time so that it keeps the temperature low. And as you can see, it doesn't get particularly hot. It doesn't get anywhere near 70 degrees. And it pretty much, I've, I've done this test a few times and it doesn't seem to go any higher than that, but also it just doesn't seem to toggle that back. But if I stop doing anything, so you can see now it's toggled itself back because it's not, it's not really doing anything. Uh, you can also see my config.tax. In fact, I was going to go out and then go back in just to show you how I overclock. Open a terminal and do sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config.tax and that will get you this. Uh, you won't have these lines in there or depending on the operating system, sometimes they have them but sometimes they're hashed out and if there's a hash, the Pi will ignore the line. So I put in over voltage of 6, arm frequency was 2000, GPU frequency equals 750. The Pi's been up for 57 minutes. I've been doing all sorts of things on it and I do get this temperature warning come up um, but that's only because I've set the temperature so low. So I can hash out this uh, and then that won't, I always, I always click in this and you've got to move the cursor down. Uh, so if I put a hash symbol there, that's not going to limit the temperature anymore but I do need to reboot to do that. So control O, enter, control X and let's do reboot. Okay, so it's been running for 15 minutes, not really doing anything, uh, and as you can see, it's already gone up to 57 degrees. Uh, but now it's not limited, so in theory it can go up to 80, 85 degrees uh, before it will cut this down. Uh, so when it's, again, when it's running idle, it's trying to use as little power as possible, but as soon as you launch something like uh, the Chrome browser, it goes straight up to 2 gigahertz. So if I drag, so if I pull that in, there you go, so two gigahertz. And if I was to type in someone like YouTube and start playing a video, then it will stay at two gigahertz and the temperature will keep rising up. Uh, you can see already we've got the 66, 67, 68. Can I get it to 70 just running YouTube? Because in theory, it's, it's not yet. It already went up to 70. So without that 65 degree limit on there, it, it is allowing itself to go beyond. Again, this isn't a problem. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any issue with it. I did read another thing that said uh, that the reason they keep the temperature uh, below 85 is for risk of burns, because if it was running at 125 degrees and someone was to, just to brush it, then they could get burnt, whereas at 85, you should be reasonably safe. Don't touch your pie when it's on, uh, would, would still be the message. So uh, let's close that down and do the same video test that I did before. So, go to Handbrake, open source, pick my video, and let's convert. It doesn't really matter what I convert it to. Well, let's just leave it on that setting and hit start. And let's see how quick this goes up. 71, 73, 74, 75. And I can make this go up faster uh, oh, you can see the, the little temperature warning is coming on now because it's at 81 degrees. I can make it go up faster by uh, increasing the clock speed and also the over voltage. So over voltage is giving more power to the Pi to allow you to run it faster. But it's still staying at 2 gigahertz, so it's still coping with that. And this is possibly this thing of, of, it, of it taking power before it toggles the CPU is the taking power from somewhere else uh, or reducing the power it needs. Uh, and, and so, yeah, so quite happily, this is running at 2 gigahertz. Yes, I've got a warning light, but, uh, but it's not slowing it down. It's still running at the same speed it would be running. And it's not going over 85, so it's not, it's not affecting the CPU. So I think what I'm going to have to do is overclock higher so that it goes up quicker and that it does toggle that back. Yeah, so let's cancel this, and you can see it drops pretty quickly down. Again, with nothing calling it, no fans or anything like that, uh, it's calling itself pretty quickly. So let's go back into terminal and let's go, let's go high. Uh, so let's go for an over voltage of say 10 at 2300. I'll keep the GPU as it is. So control O, 
enter and control X. If you get this wrong and you don't supply enough power, you might find that it doesn't boot up and then you might have to increase the power and, you, and it's kind of a game of, of sort of experimenting with it. You also might get instabilities at higher clock speed, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you can run at the faster clock speed, that it's actually doing a better job. Uh, but there's various different tests you can do to, to bear that out. Right, so let's reboot. So it's at 2.3 now, uh, although it reports as 2.4, you can see it flicks between it. Uh, and it's not been doing anything, it's been on for seven minutes, but it's been just, just running the desktop. Uh, so very, very light usage. So let's call up YouTube, and you can see the temperature's already ramping up pretty quickly. Let's just play a bit of a video. 2.4 gigahertz it's staying at, temperature 77.9, 79, probably won't get much higher than that just playing a video, although all sorts of things can make a difference, so running it at a higher resolution, so even though I'm running this desktop at 720, if I run this video at 1080, the temperature is going to go higher, yeah you can see 82, but again we've got, oh, okay so it cut out and it's rebooting, but I think that's probably just because I've got the over voltage a bit too low. So maybe I need to increase the voltage to run it at 2.3. And now it's not running at all. Uh, I can't move the mouse pointer. It's locked up. So I'm going to switch it off uh, at the mains. Because there's nothing else I can do. And I'll just change that over voltage. But I'll have to do it. I can't do it within the operating system. So I'm going to have to do it uh, either with my phone or with another computer. So let's take that SD card out and pop a different one in. So this is also running Raspberry Pi OS, I think. Uh, and let's put that card in a card reader, USB card reader. There you go. And let's boot that up first of all. And then I'll, once it's booted up, I can pop the card reader in. Uh, and then I can adjust the config.txt on that. Okay, so it shows up the removable drive has been plugged in, so let's close those two down. The one we want to do is go to boot, uh, and this is the boot partition of the one I've been overclocking with. So config.txt, and we just need to increase that. And I, I think I've had um, good results with 14 at 2.3. I can't remember, I probably should watch one of my own videos to have a look. Right, so let's do file, save, and I'll reboot with the one that I'm overclocking with. Okay, so let's try uh, YouTube again. Uh, it was the 1080 that killed it last time. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it crashed straight away. Uh, now I had success before at 2.3. I've just watched one of my own videos or looked in the comments and I had success with 2.3 but an over voltage of 11. But I think that was on my 8 gig Pi. Uh, and obviously different Pis can react differently to overclocking. But I also didn't overclock the GPU, so I'm going to not overclock the GPU and see if that makes a difference. So Control O, Enter, Control X, and reboot. Okay, so here we are at 2.3 with an over voltage of 11 without the GPU. I just tried Chromium, and as soon as it starts up, it crashes. So I'm going to use Handbrake because it looks like Handbrake is working. So let's close that down. And uh, I've already imported the file. Let's hit start and let's watch that temperature. Oh, crashes. Okay, so nearly an hour. It's been running fine uh, at 2.2. It always misreports it as 2.3, um, but it is 2.2 uh, on the CPU and the over voltage of 9. So that seems to be working fine. Uh, but it doesn't really go any higher than sort of 70 degrees. So that's not going to get me to thermal throttle. So maybe if I try the uh, video rendering test. So let's close that down. Let's do a search for handbrake. Even when handbrake starts up, it, uh, it initially goes a bit hotter. Right, so let's import that one. See, the CPU usage isn't high at the moment. It needs to be higher, really, for it to, to really heat up. So let's hit Start, and you'll see all these cores max out. There we go. Oh, and it's gone. Okay, so I'm now running at over voltage 7 and arm frequency 2147. Uh, 2147 with 6 didn't boot, uh, with 8 over voltage crashed, uh, but this seems to be 
what this particular pie likes. So I'm going to run the handbrake and I'm going to see if I can get it to uh, basically lower that clock speed by throttling. So let's close that down and hit start. So you'll see it quite quickly goes up to the sort of 80 degrees and you can see all the cores are being used. Let's move this over a little bit. So 81. I did get it up to 86 just now, but I didn't notice it changed the clock speed, so it always seemed to stay at 2.2. 83, 84, 85.2 then, 85.7. And we're starting to get more red lines come on this bottom temperature monitor here as well. But it still seems to be keeping it at 2.2. Now obviously this test could go differently if more things were plugged in. I deliberately didn't run this from an SSD drive because I figured it takes more power than an SD card. The only thing I've got plugged in is just my mouse keyboard adapter. So it is it is running on the bare minimum. Okay, so that's definitely working and it's done one before. So I think that's fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do this at 2147 and then we're gonna drop it down to 2000 and see if there's any difference because we are getting those red lines. Uh, is it throttling it back when it does it, but it's not reporting it on here. So it'll be interesting to see if 2147 is faster than two gigahertz. So let's start it. So you can see that I am getting many red lines down the bottom right hand here. Okay, so that's finished, and that was six minutes and two seconds. You can see in code done. So I need to restart now, but at 2000, uh, with maybe an over voltage of six because I think that was what I had what was stable before and see if it's actually quicker at the lower clock speed because it's not throttling. I was watching the clock speed and I didn't see it report anything lower than 2.2 but I'm wondering if these red lines are actually dipping or if it's just lowering the power. Go into the terminal and let's change this to six and 2000. Okay, so it's been playing for 12 minutes now, running YouTube, so let's close down YouTube and close down the terminal, over voltage six and 2000. So at the bottom, when it gives an ETA, on the other one it came up with a very short ETA, but it got longer as it went on. It'd be interesting to see if this does the same. Yeah, it looks like it's going up as it's working out what the file is. Still the temperature's very high, still getting up near the 83, 84. Haven't had a red line yet, that might might be telling. Oh, there's one. <laughs> but that difference of the clock speed has definitely helped because you can see that we've had one red line so far. Okay, so I'm definitely getting the red line quite regularly now, but I think it's on target to beat the 2147. Okay, so that did it in five minutes 38. So that's quite a lot quicker. So that's 20 seconds quicker than uh, at 2147. So this might even work better at lower clock speeds. Okay, so I've popped my Pi Moroni fan shim on the top now, uh, and that's half an SD card, which is spreading the pins out so it makes better contact. Uh, if you have a look, the temperature's showing 38 degrees. So I'm gonna run that test again, because uh, I did a did an initial test and I stopped it just now. But it looked like it was gonna be much, much quicker. It's moving way quicker along the line. Temperature's still going up, look, 55 degrees, 56. Okay, so that was three minutes and 18. Uh, without the fan, it was 5.38, and at the higher clock speed of 2.147 without the fan, it was six minutes and two. So it's nearly half the time of the 2.147. Um, so I think that conclusively says that it's worth cooling your pie. So even though it's not reporting that the clock speed is being brought down, it is definitely throttling in some way. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.